This motion diagram example number five is going to show you how to make a position versus time graph from your motion diagram. First, let's start with the car going across the screen. And the images that are appearing here are at equal time intervals, equal ticks of time. In this case, I've put seconds on here, but it could be minutes or seven minute sec cycles or whatever, but these equal even time intervals. Now I'll make my motion diagram, starting with my dots, from where it starts, moving across the screen, equal time intervals, and then drawing my arrows. Nice and simple thing to do. And because each dot is a position, each arrow represents a change in position. And I can take that one step further. Velocity is equal to the displacement, which is the delta x, over time. Now, these are equal time intervals, so I'll call whatever the time interval is a 1. 1 tick of time. So the displacement divided by 1 tick of time is a velocity. So each one of these is actually a velocity vector, as well as a delta x vector in this case. So I've got position, I've got delta x, and the arrows. While the change in position, they can also represent the velocity in this case. So let's focus on this motion diagram. All right, a little piece of graph paper. Now I need some axes, and I'm going to make a position, or x value, versus time graph. Call the origin right there, and then the time. Now I need some tick marks. I've got seven ticks of time. So I'll make seven tick marks. The distance between these can be anything you want to. One square, two squares, ten squares. It really doesn't matter. I've just chosen two to kind of spread up my graph a little bit. That's all. All right, so now I need to assign the delta x's. Let me give them a value on my graph. So I've got these blocks. They don't really have any units, so I'll make it simple. I'm going to call the first vector that I have drawn up there, I'm just going to call it one. One square. So delta x is equal to one square of motion. And I'm going to compare all my vectors to this one square. So if they're longer, there'll be more squares. If they're shorter, there'll be fewer squares. So I'll call the next one one square, and the next one one square, because these are constant velocity, or constant changes in position. Now the one after that's a little bit longer, so I'm going to call it one and a half. It's not really one and a half, but you get the idea. The one after that, I'll call that a little bit longer. I'll call it two, and then this one's longer still, so that's three squares is, delta, is equal to delta x. So now let's take these changes and plot them on the graph. So I'm going to start from 0, and I'll take a look at the first position. And that's got a delta x of 1. So on my graph, at the first tick mark, I'm going to go up from 0, 1 square, at that first tick mark, and put a spot, put a little dot. Now I'm going to look at the next position. And that's a delta x of 1. So from the previous spot, at the second tick, I'm going to go up 1 square from there. So one more square up, and put in a little tick mark. And I'll continue this process. So at the third position, it's a delta x of 1. So I'm going to go up 1 square from where I was at the second tick mark. So at the third tick mark, I'm going to go up 1 square higher and put a mark there at the third tick mark. That's the third tick in time. And then I'll go to the fourth, and I'll do the same thing again, going up 1 square from where I was previously located at the third tick mark. At the fourth tick mark, here we go, one more dot. Now at the fifth tick mark, it's one and a half squares up. So if my position's at the fifth, that's one and a half squares higher. So from, from where I was, at the fifth tick mark, I'll go up one and a half squares and put a little dot. And then the next position, that's two squares higher. So from the last position, I'll go up two squares because these lines are delta x's. So two squares higher. And at the sixth tick in time mark, that's at the bottom of the page along the time axis, I'll put another dot. And at the last tick mark, at the, on the horizontal axis at the bottom where it says time, that's going to be my last position, and that's three squares higher than the previous. So from where I was the sixth tick in time, I'm going to go up three squares to the new one. Now I'm almost set. I'll take a look at what this looks like. I'll draw a line through the constant velocity. Because remember, on an x versus t graph, slope is the velocity. So since these delta x's don't change, that means the velocity doesn't change. So I get a straight line. Wherever there's a constant velocity, I get a straight line on my x versus t graph. For the next section, 
the delta x's change for each mark in time. So that's going to give me a slope that's going to change. So in this case, the slope, because the delta x's are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, the slope is getting steeper and steeper and steeper. So if I think about drawing tangent lines at each one of these dots, the tangent line keeps getting steeper and steeper and steeper. So changes in x, which represented changes in velocity on our vectors, they're going to give you a curve. And you can look at the curve and see if it's increasing or decreasing, that is, if the changes are getting longer, or if the changes are getting shorter, then the slope is changing. And so that's the section of acceleration, and there you have it, a position versus time graph from a motion diagram.